quick introduction of our team, um, and then I'm going to hand it over to to Power Wellness. Um, so, as people are kind of popping online, um, you know, they can kind of join in as as needed. Um, but just uh, starting off, um, thank you for the folks that are here um, with us virtually to go through this first session of public input for the um, recreation development meetings that we're holding um, with Power Wellness. Um, and so I'm just going to go through our team real quick, just a, a brief introductions. I'm Kelly Murphy. I'm the Assistant City Manager. Um, we've got Arnie, um, who is the Director of Recreation and Senior Services. And then we've got Evelyn Prim um, on the line as well. She's our Communications Coordinator and will be helping um, with meeting logistics here. Um, and then I'm also just going to introduce our partners um, at Power Wellness. So we've got um, Alan Becker and Max Hanner here, and they'll be kind of taking the reins in a few minutes or just a minute, really, um, for me to kind of get into the input process. Um, and so just to recap what we're going to be doing, um, we're holding this first of three public input sessions designed to reopen our assessment of the Montpelier recreational needs and opportunities um, review. Um, what we're looking to do is um, get some feedback from the community um, on sort of next steps and, you know, what um, the future of recreation will be within the community. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand it over here um, to our consultants. Well, thank you. Um, we've scheduled this for 60 minutes. It, it may not take that long. Um, uh, Essentially, the purpose of our study is to figure out um, where and how new recreation and wellness facilities can be developed in the Montpelier community. Um, so we were there two weeks ago doing some interviews and touring uh, facilities, uh, existing facilities, and looking at the new um, uh, golf club road site. Um, and um, the, um, the purpose really is to see what is possible, what makes sense for the community, uh, what services should be included, uh, what amenities should be included, and where is the best location for the facility. Um, we, you know, the go uh, golf club is certainly a potential I think it's country club, Alan. What country club? Country club. Sorry. country club is certainly a potential location, but we were told to approach this with open minds and uh, as objectively as possible and see what, what might make the most sense. So this is the first of our public meetings and there'll be two more um, on the August 9th and August 14th. And so, since we have a small audience, I don't think we need to be too concerned about the rules. We can really have a great conversation, but um, we kind of designed this to ask one question at a time and then talk about these questions and, you know, figure out um, who agrees and um, who disagrees. And since we just have Christine on, if she wants to disagree with herself, that would be fine with me. Christine, you should probably unmute um, your microphone if it's muted, um, since we're going to be having a conversation. Alan, um, there are a few more that are on the line okay. um, that are beyond okay. there that if you just scroll over, you can kind of see. Um, okay. So uh, I, I think there will be a few uh, more, hopefully, that will come in. Just okay. wanted to make you aware. Okay. Do you want to wait another minute or so? Nope. Um, we can, we can totally... Uh, keep going through. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that there's um, a couple more on. Okay, that's great. Um, so I think the first and main question is, how does Montpelier define recreation and wellness? What are they? And what should they be in the future? Um, second question is, where do you get your information from about wellness today? Um, what do you expect from a recreation and wellness center? Um, what programs would you like to see? And what um, special amenities uh, and programs such as summer camp? And how do you self see yourself being involved? That could be 
as a as a member as an instructor and then how can the center promote uh, our sense of community and uh, social interaction and then are there some specific health challenges uh, that are maybe more pronounced in the Montpelier area that we need to identify programs for? And then what additional features should be included? And then, of course, the final question is, what is the ideal location? And then, you know, on a scale of one to 10, is this very important to you or not important at all? So I'll go back to uh, the first question, and that is how do we define recreation and wellness in Mont the Montpelier community and open it up for a discussion? Anybody have any thoughts? Well, to me, wellness and um, recreation are two different things. Um, wellness includes so you know health and so forth. Recreation is actually doing things. Um, I don't know what else people want to say there. Am I the only? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I think the best way to look at this is you think about Montpelier historically now and in the future, you know, how is wellness defined today? Where do you go for your sources of wellness, recreation? What do you do in your community? Um, whether that's playing sports, activities, kind of what is it? You know, we, we'd love to hear from the, the group here what, what overall thoughts are as you define in your city what recreation and wellness means to you. I don't know if, can you hear me? Am I on this? Yes. Yep. Okay. My name is Rob Apple. Um, my feeling is recreation and wellness are two very separate activities and difference. Recreation is involvement with, you know, activities that keep you well, obviously, but it's sports, it's pickleball, it's tennis, it's pickup basketball, it's soccer, it's biking, uh, it, that kind of activity. Wellness is an individual activity or effort on your own part um, to try to keep well. I don't think the two have to be combined. They're important. Um, I don't know if that's making sense, but I think recreational activities is what we ought to be focusing on. Right, uh, right. I missed, the, I missed the real beginning. I personally feel we shouldn't be talking about a new recreational center anywhere when this city can't afford to do what it's even doing right. now. Uh, and <laughs> exactly. we should get off of that subject now and, and focus on what can we do in this city today in the near future to improve recreational opportunities for Montpelier residents. I agree with that. Um, I think the rec building has a lot of potential. Um, and I think for myself, I would like to see machines and weights there so that in the winter time, I wouldn't have to drive over to the country club. For instance, I drive very little in the winter. I prefer things, I prefer things central. Um, and I do feel that um, our finances in the city and other issues that we have to deal with now, such as the flooding, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the things that came out once we had the first big flood, those things take priority as well as infrastructure in our city. The streets are still abysmal. Um, anyway, the thing that I miss is a chance to have machines um, and weights. When there was the first in fitness business here, um, it was perfect for me. I could just go out of my office and at lunch or at the end of the day um, and now you know, I have to drive someplace which really doesn't, the whole thing is it, is it has a different feel to it. This one was just basic and useful, I thought. Obviously, I'm an older person and um, 
or not obviously, you can't see me perhaps, but, um, you know, I mean, wellness, yes, there might, I guess you're talking about maybe having classes in nutrition or something. Um, I personally, I don't know that I would do that, uh, but I think perhaps the senior center might be doing that right now. I don't know. Those are my basic comments. Well, those that's good feedback. Those are good comments. I would say there's there's no wrong answers here. So if there's something right. you feel like, you know, we're not trying to lead any paths here. It's we want to hear from the community what they feel is most important as we focus on wellness and recreation, what that means. Um, well, that's nutrition, well, mental health, whatever that would be. I mean, getting back to that idea of this, are we looking for a center a new center to create um, the big site where RK Miles was. It looks like they're, in, I, I don't know, but it's, I'm wondering whether that's going to be developed uh, again by RK Miles or whether- I don't, I don't think so. I've heard all that RK Miles is looking hard at a place in Berlin up on the hill right. to consolidate their operations from Barry. And I, I've heard they're not planning on operating ever again in Montpelier. That's okay. Important. So that would give us a great opportunity to look at housing for that big site or something housing that includes recreational part, part of the recreation program as far as um, in addition to what might be able to be created in the rec center that's there now. Um, we know there was a, a plan drawn up to renovate the existing recreation center. Mm hmm um have did you participate in any discussions about that no i never i didn't really know anything about it i thought um i had heard from our city council members that a grant i believe it was that somehow there was going to be some money to do some re remedial work in that building which would be a great thing um but of course more than that has to be done uh, the space is, I think, not very well utilized. There's quite a bit of space there. Um, of course, at that point, people were saying, well, perhaps we should help the homeless there. Um, I'm only speaking on my, for my interest is really trying to get recreation that I can use on a daily basis. Right. Now, I'm in agreement. I mean, you know, people now are playing indoor pickleball there. Uh, you know, obviously in a very tight, confined uh, manner. Um, but is there are there opportunities within that building to create a, a small weight room? Seems to me there is. You walk in there on the left. There's a like area that has some shelves in there and a, and a bench that could easily fit some, some basic weights um, without having to do much of anything. I don't know what that room right. is used for now. Um, and maybe someone from the rec department's on this call. Um, and I know the basement, I know there are issues of probably asbestos and things like that in that building uh, from historical patterns. I think that's kind of what I understood that study, original study came up with was significant cost to bring that building up to a, uh, any kind of usable under current codes. But uh, I, had heard, I had heard that a grant had been applied for and there was a good chance to get it that would cover the cost of that. So we don't have to worry anymore. We wouldn't right. have to. If, if they got the grant, if it was written and accepted and all that, I would agree. I, I do think taking a hard look at the, the, the minimum necessary to get that building into a more usable space and stop the focus on thinking about a brand new grandiose building. That was a, right. my agree. opinion as a Montpelier taxpayer, that was another pie in the dream, pie in the sky dream that can never be afforded in Montpelier. You know, we are currently um, getting on a soapbox, I'll pull back. We're paying, you know, $2 million or $3 million bond for a piece of land that probably is never gonna get developed in any significant way because of the, the incredible infrastructure costs to, to make it possible. Now it's being used for some minor things, um, you know, the, the um, disc golf, things like that, homeless shelter, very important. Uh, for that purpose, but I agree with uh, Charlene was just talking about, you know, having that as a recreational center where you gotta get in your car and drive to, 
to, I, you know, it's not what Montpelier is about. We have recreational right. fields now that are unused because they haven't been restored and people think they ought to be go back into a floodplain. But a recreational field, even a used recreational field, serves as a floodplain. It's grass, right? I'm right, missing right. something here, but yet no work has taken place at all on that field this year. And it's now grown up into a wild field, which is, you know, nice from an aesthetic standpoint, from a recreational standpoint. And I understand people say, well, the recreational fields now are up at the, uh, the uh, elk club where you got to drive to. Uh, and yes, you used to have to drive to the fields, but you also, if you wanted to, could walk or bike to those fields. Right, right. The street you, would play, you know, if you had the opportunity, physical ability to do so. Um, anyway, I'll back off. I'm sorry. No, no, that's good. Good feedback. Um, to, you know, recreation and wellness are two kinds of different things. There may be two sides of the coin. Of the coin. Um, the, what about well wellness from Montpelier's perspective? Is Montpelier um, is there a focus on wellness and oh. health through the hospital and other agencies? There must there must be, but again, I come back to a feeling of is wellness the responsibility of the city of Montpelier to provide wellness? It was that <laughs> an individual responsibility on their own to to seek out wellness, whether it's through the senior center classes, whether it's through the hospital programs, if they exist, uh, but recreation, public recreational experiences for the entire spectrum of Montpelier residents is clearly, in my mind, a very important focus. I don't quite understand, and I'm sorry I missed the beginning here, of why wellness and recreation are being tied together in this study or whatever it is that you guys are putting together. Um, Again, just a thought. No, um, I agree. Certainly, I agree. I don't know. Are there any other um, of us citizens on this I don't know. Thirteen of us. Just... There's thir only thirteen of us on here, right? Is that what I see? Pardon me. There are only thirteen people on this call. Is that what I read here just now, or are there more than that? Yes, that's um, what it says. Participants, right. but I don't. Maybe that's counting. Um, Kelly Murphy and Evelyn Prim and the two of you, or the two from Power Wellness, or is it? Yeah, Power Wellness. Hi, my name is Mike, and I am a citizen of Montpelier and listening in and have thoughts on this as well. Great. Please speak up. Um, I do know that um, several years ago, prior to the pandemic, there was a study done to renovate the existing rec center, the old armory building. Um, it was a fairly high cost per square foot dollar to, to, to renovate the space and put another a work a workout gym in the basement area, provide ADA compliance and whatnot. Um, I would comment that that is a very tight site with almost zero parking and right, not a right. lot of room for anything else other than a small weight room. Even those machines take up a lot of space. Um, I challenge people in this town. I know that services are needed downtown, which is mostly a floodplain. And I, I do believe that some, some of our concerns can be dealt with within the downtown area. But if you look at a map, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating this to people who haven't heard it before, but we have several main thoroughfares in and out of town, including Route 12, Terrace Street, Elm Street, Berlin Street. Um, and we have facilities sort of located near the ends of those where the rec fields are now, the high school is at, at the end. Um, Country Club Road pr provides a pretty good opportunity not too far outside of town um, with a new path that goes right to it. Mm -hmm. um, I do understand the concerns about having something accessible yeah. for people who I, have a hard time getting they're there. Having, they're having some discussion about oh. previous studies and stuff oh. like that, so. Okay, Thank well, you. if you can put my name on there, I guess that's fine. Yeah. Um, so I think that wraps, wraps up what uh, my I thought. I, I do agree that there's issues with the town now and, and uh, all the other things that were mentioned, roads, taxes, yes, all these things. But I believe um, one thing we keep hearing too is that the population hasn't grown uh, much in the city in many years and or decades. But I don't think there's been a reason for it to, whereas if somehow we could create a place where people would 
see a lot of benefit where lots of things could happen 12 months a year that would help change the dynamics in the years to come. But it's uh, it's not going to be easy to get there. Yeah, that's appreciate the honest uh, feedback, Mike. And just to recap for folks that are just joining or hadn't heard the intro. So, you know, obviously the master plan that was done for the country club site, country club road site includes housing and a certain section for recreational use. And what we've been engaged to do is identify if that space or other spaces in Montpelier should be used for recreation or wellness center utilization, which can be blended into one thing. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of work in this space that you have a wellness or recreation center that can kind of be co-represented in one um, spot. So what we're trying to do is assess if that spot were to be done or somewhere else, what would the city really be looking for as it relates to recreation, activity, sports, wellness, exercise, uh, mental, nutritional uh, well-being? Can you do that in one center? What's the ideal mix for the community? Because um, we do this at towns all over the country and it can be different from town to town on what the expectation is, depending on the population, demographics, age, et cetera. Do you wanna go to the next question, Alan? Sure. I mean, I think we've talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, we've uh, certainly a weight room. What other things would we expect to see well, in a center? Well, I had mentioned machines. That means elliptical, right. um, whatever, you know, Cardio. a regular small gym. Now, I understand right. obviously that building is has a very small footprint, even if you count all the floors. But that would that's something that would be useful to me. Country club site is not useful. It can be a plan. It can be something that's useful in the future. I personally. I'm not going to work on that at this point. I'm just going to try to see what I can do to that we get a little bit more centered here with needs at hand. Um, so I think I've spoken a lot enough, and and um, I definitely don't like us spending time thinking about the ideal when, in fact, we have some basics that need taken care of in the town. I'm actually going to leave the meeting now because I think you've heard enough from me. <laughs> and I do have some work to do. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you. You know, one of the things that, that maybe we didn't do well is help to define what wellness is. Um, because wellness is kind of an amorphous concept, I think. Um, to us, wellness means using um, what are typically thought of as recreational facilities or recreational programs to improve someone's health. Um, does that does that make any sense to anybody? It makes sense to me. So I'm just wondering why why wellness is even in this. Why wouldn't it be recreational opportunities? What are the recreational opportunities, both current and future in Montpelier, assuming that recre participating in recreation is certainly a major step to being, uh, well, being well, I don't know, helping with wellness. Um, uh, you know, and again, as, as, as was mentioned earlier, you do have a senior center there, uh, active senior center, I understand, I'm a participant, but that probably does offer or could offer wellness uh, programs and education and but not recreation necessarily if, if I think of recreation I think of active recreation I guess um, as opposed yeah. to passive recreation and I guess there is a difference but in my mind it's the recreational activities and experiences that the city of Montpelier can could um, and maybe should be offering uh, you know right now for example and I use this, this as an example Montpelier has no official pickleball courts, whereas communities around Montpelier have taken tennis courts, converted them to honest to goodness pickleball. Pickleball is a huge growing sport in Montpelier. There are a lot of people now in this town participating, uh, but yet I've yet to hear what a plan is to develop 
that experience other than throw some lines on some existing tennis courts and let the tennis court people and the pickleball court people fight each other out, which doesn't really solve the long-term problem. Um, but again, you know, it's the, the recreational fields. So what do we have left now? We have them down at Elm Street pretty much primarily up at Vermont College occasionally, or it used to be Vermont College and that may not serve in the future. Um, but is there a need for more, you know, fields? You've got a high school that's going through um, some self thinking about, can they even support being by themselves? Um, is there an opportunity to create more recreational experience there? Should the high school decide to merge with U32 or whatever is gonna happen in the future? All these things are out there on the table now because of the tremendous fiscal challenges facing taxpayers in Montpelier who no longer can afford to see these tax increases that have occurred like this past year. I, in my mind, those days are over. You know, the next budgets that come from Montpelier, city government that has increases, I think are gonna go down in flames. I think those days are behind us now after what happened this year, the reappraisal and everything else. And so there's a lot of dialogue going on within the city now as to what we all can do to keep our city you know, vibrant, alive, um, but not be buried under extreme debt that has taken place. So I don't know. Again, I feel like I'm going on a soapbox, so I should be quiet too. And, no, that's okay. Somebody, one of the meetings that we had when we were there a couple of weeks ago, a couple of people brought up the point that, um, I mean, brought up the points you made. And then a couple of people on the converse side of that said, well, if we want to grow our tax base, another way to grow it is to grow population sure. and to create more housing and to create something that attracts people to come to Montpelier and makes it easier for companies to recruit people and for actually for the hospital to recruit physicians. Yep. Um, in, in medical professionals. So what do you need to do? What does Montpelier not have right now that would that we could add that would encourage people to want to move there or make it a more attractive community? Well, I mean, maintenance of the existing facilities. You know, I know, for example, the tennis courts in Elm Street are due to be resurfaced. Um, they're cracked. No one's using them basically anymore, or very few people are. Um, you know, those kind of ongoing uh, enhancement of the existing recreational facilities would go go a long way. Uh, obviously a major effort, but I, I just struggle with visualizing how even trying to think about the major expenditures for like a freestanding recreational center now can even be thought about given the, the limitations that Montpelier faces. I mean, as we all know in Montpelier, the budget is tight. You know, they, they haven't spent money on infrastructure upgrades or fixing water leaks time and time again because, you know, there hasn't been a, there is a comprehensive plan. I should not say there isn't, but it's difficult to implement a lot of those improvements because of the fiscal limitations. So it's all, all good and well to have this study and this analysis. Um, but I don't know, I keep feeling it all, it all focus in on what are, are there new additional recreational experiences that ought to happen? Or are we, do we have what we need and what do we need to do to make to make sure they're in the best shape possible? Um, and again, you know, we all framing. know it needs housing uh, yeah. and that's a limited world. And I, the uh, Oak Center was the proposal to try to create housing up there. Uh, and it's gonna take a long time to make it happen given the incredible infrastructure costs that's gonna be necessary to support housing up there, but you know, we're on that road, hopefully moving towards it. I hope someday in the future. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm jumping around here, I feel like. So. No, that's that's good framing of the discussion. What about, um, you know, when we visited the building uh, on Country Club Road, we thought the building was in pretty good condition, actually. Ooh. And well, you know, everybody, and you all know that people in the city on this, there was a private proposal uh, from a group of individuals and people in Montpelier who wanted to turn that building into a recreational facility. Uh, and yes, they were going to charge for it. Uh, I don't know what they were going to charge, but they were ready to go four years ago, I think it was now, to turn that building into a 
significant recreational facility. Uh, and the city decided, city government at the time, city council decided not to work with that group. I personally think that was a lost opportunity uh, to have had something in place to see how people felt about recreation up there and whether it was worth it to keep going, either take it over from this group after they decided to move out of it um, or do something in addition to it. Uh, that building is great potential for a recreational facility with some work. You know, it obviously had issues uh, that they had to do work on to even make it temporary homeless. Uh, but it's there. It's there now. Um, that's better than having nothing in, in place. Um, start with that building and work on it. Make something happen there. Step one uh, for what the city would to you, consider. What, what would you think if, you know, if redoing the existing recreation center, let's say, were to cost four or $5 million and, um, you know, or we could put four or five million dollars into um, renovating Country Club. Well, I think you get more. Is that, your, does that is that a good comparison? Is that well? A, I don't know if it's a good comparison, given that the current recreation center is very small, um, very tight, has some apparently significant issues when that study was completed. I understand the previous caller's concern about she doesn't drive. How is she going to get to the recreation up to the country club? That's a big issue now. As you can hopefully, I assume if anything happens up there, you know, the bus now seems to go up into Hubbard Park and turn around now. I don't think it has anybody normally in it, but they're doing that. So if that bus service continues, I guess it would add the recreation for the Elk Club onto their their stops. And so you can grab that bus and get up to the rec up to the Elk Club. Um, you're going to get more all for your money for four five million dollars up there renovating that building than you are downtown, unfortunately. And I guess that's just a physical reality of the difference between that building and what's downtown historically, in my opinion. Okay. Um, one of the questions we uh, we had was how do individual citizens see themselves being involved um, with the services at the recreation center? Do, um, do you see yourself being able to play a specific role or do you see yourself as a user or maybe an instructor or? No, for me, myself, you're talking to me, a user. User, uh, okay. That's good. Hi, uh, this is Nat Winthrop, uh, Rob. Uh, I represent the hub, that group that's been in discussions <laughs> with the city for three plus years. Um, and we still are. Um, it's not uh, really accurate that the city council uh, decided not to work with us. It's that we couldn't come to terms. We're, we're, we're still in discussion with uh, the city and we expect to make a, a new proposal to the city administration and the city government, I mean, the city council to um, to make use of that existing building and also to build a, a new building, which would be mainly for tennis and pickleball. Um, I recognize uh, the fiscal uh, bind that we're in, serious bind, uh, largely as a result of the flood last year, but other reasons. And uh, however, uh, I think we need to be more forward looking in terms of future generations. Our, our recreational facilities are, are kind of pale in comparison to both berries and water berries. And the building on Berry Street uh, is, as has been alluded to, Mike, you alluded to it, uh, and you too, Rob, uh, is really, uh, you know, not uh, an ideal recreational destination, uh, to say the least. It's It's only indoor. There's no parking um 
we're the capital city and uh as as you've said alan uh we need to uh attract more residents and businesses and we love the country club site because uh largely because of the housing plants and yes that's going to take a while and i'm over 70 years old i'm thinking in terms of my kids and my grandkids and um that once there are 300 housing units however many housing units up there uh there need to be um a lot of people have expressed that it should be a community up there uh they need uh recreational and other amenities and i think in partnership with the city the hub can really provide uh significant uh assets to that property um i also want to remind people that uh very soon after the city bought that property uh there was a vote on the city council as to whether to renovate the existing building on Barry Street build a new rec center at the rec field next to the existing outdoor tennis courts there or uh up on the country club property i'm disappointed that there aren't any city councilors at this forum but um it was a unanimous vote that by far because it's not in a floodplain there's plenty of parking you know they can do indoor and outdoor recreation there and other amenities anyway um we are now we mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting we are going to have two more of these sessions right and the other two will be hybrid and it will be at the city um, office building. So hopefully those will be uh, more attended that we have gotten good input um, in this one too. And it, it, you know, a lot of the issues do seem to come down to what's the best location. Do we put money into the existing building or do we do something on country club? So, hey, hey, Alan, this is Mike Vitti again. Yes. Um, I would like to um, follow up on what Nat said. It's, he's right. Uh, we, this area really does need uh, a significant upgrade to its recreation facilities. I think if you would look back over the decades of the amount of um, recreational sports, for example, um, that people are participating in, the number has, uh, the options have grown uh, as times and new sports and things develop and show up in our neck of the woods and, and people get involved. And I think we really do need a place where people can be included to do lots of different activities. You know, they point out Waterbury with the, the ice rink they have there and, and other towns nearby. I would, I would play a little bit of the devil at devil's advocate as to what Rob was saying earlier. It's like, you know, I, I think there's a chance you may find that the younger generations in this area may consider in this in the area would consider spending money on something like this. Um, yes, we understand that there's lots of tax and issues, and we all in town pay are paying our share, if not more. But um, it's it, it seems a little short sighted to not, as Nat said, you know, consider the further generations down. Um, roads at some point will be fixed. You hope. But if you're not getting any younger uh, families to move up here and, and growing the population base, um, it's it's just going to be stagnant, as one would say it could have been for the past 20 years. Um, I, I do think the need for an inclusive place for lots of different activities to happen um, to help diversify the potential for for income and people is is huge. Um, not saying that I have the money to pay for it either. I would just put my head in the sand and keep going and keep paying. Um, but that is just my gut response right now. So um, this question that's up, I mean, I think we've kind of addressed this too. Um, 
the, you know, would something like this promote a sense of community? Um, does the community need that? Um, is it lacking today? Um, we, you know, we've heard a lot of different opinions about that. Does anybody want to say anything else on this? Or do you want to move on to the next? I, I think a recreational experience is up there updated and, and, and active would certainly promote the community. I mean, I think that's a given. There's no recreational community. You look what's happened in Barrytown, as Mitch mentioned in Waterbury. I mean, those, those, and you look at the growth that's occurred in Waterbury and young people moving to Waterbury for a variety of reasons. A vibrant downtown right now with a restaurant scene that it dwarfs what's going on in Montpelier, unfortunately, because of what our flood did. Um, and that's what drives families wanting to come and live. I mean, yes, living in Montpelier is expensive, ha always has been, and always will be, but yet Montpelier is a gem in itself, and even with our annual, biannual floods that keep happening and probably always will keep happening. Uh, it's a great, and there are a lot of young families who are trying to make a go of it in Montpelier. Um, who would jump at the opportunity to, to see more, a better experience. Okay. Um, Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just uh, seconded what Rob just said. Okay. He okay. said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, and I know we've touched on this before, but is there anything that's unique about the health status of the Montpelier community that this could address or help to address. Well, we're an aging community for sure. Uh, so yes, uh, both in terms of wellness and recreation, uh, I think it would help address uh, the health of the community. And does this seem like something the hospital should be involved in also? Well, you've got a challenge there. You've got a hospital system that it too is financially uh, challenging right now for them. Um, and they, I think their focus, probably, I can't speak for the hospital, but I assume the hospital's focus is providing medical care to the best they can do, given their financial limitations that they're facing in partnership with UVM Medical Center. Um, and so, yes, I mean, they can offer whether they want to, whether they have the capacity or the ability to do so. It's certainly something out of our control. That's a private institution funded by a lot of different sources. Um, and you, know, you can't sort of say, hey, you gotta create more programs. Uh, but obviously, the more people are well, the better the community is. But I don't know how you, I don't know how you get the hospital clearly involved. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about actually. So I shut up. <laughs> no, the, the, that is a challenge. A lot of the communities we work in, we work um, with the hospital is involved in, you know, helping to lend staff to set up certain programs. Um, certain types of therapies for people there who are already, you know, finished with their insurance paid physical therapy, for example, and are kind of on their own. Um, so a lot of hospitals get involved in things like that. Um, and uh, they get involved sometimes in encouraging physicians to refer patients to recreational facilities for various programs. Um, it's just that the hospitals, you know, they, they kind of look for a partner in that too. Um, if the, if the opportunity is there, they'll, you know, they'll pursue it sometimes. Uh, but we don't know what the details would be here yet. So the hospital did participate in some of the meetings we had when we were there on site, which we thought was very encouraging. So... Um, so any additional things that we need to consider adding to this, 
Um, we've heard about, you know, weight rooms, machines, tennis, pickleball, um, some more outdoor playing fields. Uh, what about child care or daycare? Absolutely. Uh, that's another reason that uh, the hospital, uh, National Life of Vermont, and others are having trouble attracting uh, employees is there isn't uh, adequate uh, child care available here. And as you know, there's already, uh, there was uh, a, a preschool up there in the existing building in the clubhouse. And uh, as far as the hub is concerned, we would uh, love to see um, that that turn into, uh, you know, the, uh, I, I'm going to mute this. <laughs> OK. Was that oh. Nat? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. OK. okay. Um, I just wanted to share something really quick that uh, a community member expressed to me um, anecdotally. And they had said that they would like to see more um, old timey uh, like playgrounds and just different public, um, you know, public <laughs> areas like swing sets and slides and just things like that for kids to enjoy. Okay, that's great to know. I don't think anybody mentioned that before. Yeah, the hub uh, uh, is tentatively planning to put in a playground facility up there uh, if we can come to terms with the city. Okay. Now, when I take it, we're going to talk about other team needs. I think there's needs for uh, wooden courts for 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 basketball and volleyball. I think I think you can go down the road of lots of lots of different youth sports teams that have very limited um, seasons here uh, for field outdoor field use could really use um, space indoors uh, for practice for training. Um, for recreation department to have their to have their teams play and practice in, you know, people start fighting for space months and months and months in advance for the one basketball court we have now. Um, you know, the schools have a hard time sharing, but that's sort of a separate road that they're getting a little better with for at least for um, some tournaments and and recreation games. But in terms of outside leagues and and really bringing people to town, I think, I think there are a lot of needs for um, indoor facilities. Just talking about indoor, certainly outdoor as well. Right. The town currently has one soccer field, uh, two actually with the uh, Vermont College. But again, um, you start breaking down age groups and um, boys and girls teams and things like that and places get overwhelmed very quickly. And I think as you provide more space for people to to use, you will find more volunteers to help um, with ease of access and opportunity. Okay, great. And I, I don't know if we've already answered this question or not, but um, in this discussion, is there a location under consideration other than um, Country Club or redoing the existing rec center? Somebody mentioned some other piece of property earlier in the call, but I wasn't exactly sure what they were talking about. It was a... Yeah, that's RK Miles uh, property next to the food co-op. And uh, that is... Uh, potential site. The problem is the city doesn't have the money to uh, to both buy the property and uh, put up a new rec center building there. Uh, there would be room for uh, some significant parking there. So that would be uh, a possibility. And, yeah. 
And how large is that site? Does anyone know? It's something there? like uh, 200 by 250 feet. That's just an educated yeah. guess. The only thing about that, the whole area with their, their uh, lumber store is pretty big now, isn't it? Right, right, right. It's probably bigger than what I just said, yeah. Um, Just really quick, uh... Kelly Murphy here. Just, um, I, I think, you know, certainly we could evaluate other sites, um, such as that one. We have not currently evaluated that site just because we do have, you know, two current locations that, you know, we're trying to evaluate and determine whether or not the, you know, they would be viable and which direction to go in. So we're just kind of looking for feedback in terms of, you know, generally, you know, should we be looking at the existing recreation facility? Should we be looking at Country Club Road um, to introduce a third, you know, possible location at this point? I don't know that we are are looking to do that. Um, so I think we're really wanting to kind of hear what folks have to say. We, you know, certainly from this conversation, you know, we can see two sides of this. One is, you know, really thinking about what we do have and taking care of those facilities. And then two, you know, the Country Club Road site. And so there are benefits to that site as well. Um, so I just want to keep this conversation going and not get um, held up in a potential site that we have not vetted at this time. Right. And also sounds like it's too small. It only sounds like it's a couple of acres, if that much. So. But and I also... I also think that depending on, you know, which direction we go in, you know, what kind of, so we don't have answers to, you know, um, size of facility or what we would put in there yet. So it just would be really tricky to kind of look at that site. Okay. Yeah, Alan, I think we got, you know, one question after, after this, but I think the question that we're trying to get to is between the current rec center being renovated and a site on a rec center, wellness center on the country club road. From the team that the people that are on, what what would be the ideal location between those two sites that we're trying to really get at? Right. Country Club Road. Okay. Yeah, I think you, I think you have no choice. The, the rec center building is small. It's limited. Has no parking. It can only have a certain level of use. Sure. Country Club property has much greater potential just from the standpoint that it's wide open and it's got an existing building that can be worked with. It's got a potential partnership that can be worked with. You know, I go back to that partnership with the hub. And I think the city probably should have, in my opinion, done something with them in the beginning. And we wouldn't even be having some of this discussion right now. Um, so anyway, my two cents. Okay. Maybe. And you can't do, what can you do with a rec building? You're not going to expand it. You're not going to, all you can do is tweak some things in there. Should it stay there? Yes. Should it still have some use? Yes. But it's not going to take, no point in spending a lot of time and money studying it now. Because what are you going to do with that tight space? It, it, it ought to be a secondary. You know, it's a basketball court now. It's a in very tight indoor pickleball experience and that's all it is right now as far as i can see and I, maybe they have classes in there these days i don't know i think they do i haven't been there much other than to play some pickleball occasionally okay well i think unless um we've pretty much come up on our time does anyone else have anything to add before we conclude I would like to get a sense, Alan, just from the people that are on, if there's no other comments on this last point, it's just the last question we asked, not in vain, just to really understand if you could get on the next slide, Alan, please. Um, you know, we want to just base on a scale of one to 10, if you're not interested at all in upgrading the current facilities or renovating, building a new rec wellness center, or 10 being, we really need to do this. This sounds awesome. How important is building or renovating the center to you? We'd love to kind of just get a sense from the folks that are on from the community right now where they feel they, they stand. Why is, why is this discussion just focusing on a building as opposed to recreational facilities? 
it seems like you're limiting your this whoever funded this study is going to look at a new building. Um, why is it not? Can we not look at the entire recreational experience in Montpelier? A building is only part of it. There are fields, there are courts, um, all of the elements. They're not all going to be inside a building, all links. I don't know. That's yeah, I think that's a good question. Kelly, you can maybe help answer, but the, the purpose of why we've been engaged is to look at the current rec center and the okay. master plan for where the new location on Country Club Road is. And whatever you do, you're going to have to do some sort of building. Is it a new edifice? Maybe not, but there's going to be renovations and there's going to be a lot of renovations to make sure it can accommodate whatever the facility and the city is looking to do. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, this, this study in particular is really in response to the actionable master plan um, and doing the public input process outlined therein. And it also kind of dovetails with, you know, previous review that we've done of um, recreation facilities. Um, you know, I will say that, you know, up as part of this conversation are also the fields and such, um, you know, and I think in light of the flooding, but then also not, you know, there are fields at that location right now. Um, we do have existing facilities and we are looking to see how this um, development, if there is future development, sort of um, works with our existing recreation um, footprint. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, and so that this is sort of trying to figure out you know, how, how will we utilize the site going forward um, and then taking it from there? Well, Rob and Nat and Mike, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Sorry, there were three of us, I guess, but right. a noontime meeting. You're going to get the <laughs> retired guys or whatever with comments. And... Totally fine, we did and for the record, I'm all in on a increasing and improving the recreation experience in the state capital uh, to be all inclusive because it's warranted. We need it. Uh, we deserve it. And people will come. I second his opinion. Yes, I give it a, a, either a nine or a 10. <laughs> and, uh, the fact that... Uh, the city is in the financial short term, hopefully financial bind. Obviously, there'd be state and federal grants that both the city and the hub would be looking at. Um, but to have a partnership and, uh, you know, our tennis and pickleball courts, uh, our plan is to also make those available for uh, other activities, even uh indoor concerts during the winter time or uh certainly basketball and and other indoor sports uh are possible so if we can work with the city um you know it seems like a no-brainer that the time is ripe for this kind of partnership i mean i'm going to date myself but many years ago when i was a young regional planner i wrote a what used to be called Bureau of Outdoor Recreation grant application for the town of Barrie to build all the recreational fields and the facilities up there. And they got the grant and away they went and the rest is history. Um, so their grants, I think those programs still exist. Maybe they don't, I don't know. But um, there's there's money out there to be had. It's not necessarily coming out of the city of Montpelier taxpayers. And I think it's essential that you get a message back to the city council. And I know Adrian, one of the new city council members, has started a grant committee searching and trying to find grants because Montpelier doesn't seem to get these grants that are been Berlin, Waterbury, Barrytown, Barry City have gotten recently to update and improve their recreational facilities. So pass that on to the powers that be. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I think we're at time. Just as a, as a final question for someone who joined a little bit late, is there a good way to get kind of read on what this discussion is about and what the strategies here are? I this stand. Is through Facebook. I didn't see it until. Yeah, I stand. Ago. I just put some links in the chat um, if you can see them. 
uh, to the webpage where we're collecting information on this project. So that's the best place to check. And then I also um, put in there the links to the notify me um, notification list, which I think you're already on. Um, but those okay. are the two best ways to stay up, up to date and catch up on everything that's happened so far. Great, thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for coming. I just want to, in closing, um, just note that the next input session will be on August 9th. Um, and uh, if you link to the the um, links in the chat there, you can get more information on that. So thank you. Really appreciate thank you. it. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.